So the last video I made, I was showing you the start of this project. This is now all completed, and these are the graphics. So we start on the front page. This is the front page that they, they will load up as soon as uh, it's on site. And then we've got the air source heat pumps graphic. And then we've got the heat recovery unit for ground one. And these are duplicate, but naturally different values. I'll show you the logic in a bit. We'll go through that. So that's five. That's the first floor. And there are the heat recoveries. So ground floor plan. First floor plan. Domestic hot water. Radiator pumps. Heating coil pumps. Extract fans. Radiator circuit. Domestic hot water tank, low temperature hot water tank, so it's getting its feed from its air source heat pumps. There's, these links just go directly to that graphic. External lighting, cold water storage, weather forecast, five day meters each one of these got histories on them as well so you can click on this and this will bring up a pop-up uh, when you click on it points overridden none alarm points list and alarms page wait for it to load now naturally this is not being commissioned so it's still got to be commissioned on site let me go back to the home page again so let's look at the uh, logic views wire sheet this is simple logic as so I've put the bit of a description of operation in there just to show you what this logic does we've got a, an AND circuit so we've got everything going in there that needs to be true once that's true AHU gets enabled if fire alarm or the emergency stop that enable will go false the reason this bit of 30 minute uh, override is in here on the safety is they wanted the HRU to run for a minimum of 10 minutes so once it started it will run continuously for 10 minutes and then carry on running but if we had an emergency stop or a fire alarm I want to interrupt that 10 minutes and I've done that by writing into the in five so you can see this is the point that I'm writing into to disable the system. This is the point that will enable the system. And it's it's just a tier system. So anything that's before this point, it will take notice off. And anything after the point, um, so if I wrote into in 16, I could have put that five that input there to in 5 I could have put it into in 15 but because I normally write to in 10 I needed to put it in before that so if it was overridden which is this in 8 then that's an issue so I couldn't I couldn't put it into in 9 so I needed to go into in 5 before the override the emergency override is always 1 and that I can't stop but but the operator would never ever do an emergency override they would normally just do an override which is on in eight hence that's why I've put that into in five so the logic is the same for all them HRUs so let's see if I've got anything in ground floor I don't think I have I think it's just there for yeah 
just for navigation reasons but I will have something in here domestic cut water pumps so all we're doing is enable there's no changeover or anything like that it's just simple logic checking that everything is healthy um, the safety so there's this ant gate here from the safety and then the time clock if we follow the safety through will go there's your safety there and this pump safety will come from here let me just uh, go to the wire sheet for it so again we've got the four safety circuits and we have different conditions so fire EPO low pressure and high pressure is the safety for the SOC pump that one is the safety for the radiator, safety heating, a heating coil circuit and domestic hot water pumps. And this one which just works on fire and EPO is domestic hot water, heat recovery and extract fans. So let's go back to the logic again. So we'll look at another one, radiator pumps. Again, I've put the information here of how this logic works from a description of operation it's quite good when you're commissioning you can actually um, read out or, or, or see how the logic was written to the de description of operation it's normal proportional integral loop there and it's adjusting the heating valve via these two inputs there the set point and the control variable go to the next one like I said it's simple logic it's not um, hard extract fans and then what I've done there is we have a, a run hours use folder which can um, alarm when maintenance is required for it after it's been running for 5,000 hours. And then when it runs for 6,000 hours, we just send an alarm for maintenance exceeded. They're the same for all extract fans, radiator circuits. Let's look at that. Right, uh, space temperature, so we've got all the temperatures in there. Each one of these has got their own folder and it's controlling a valve for the radiator circuits on the floors. And they're all added together to give a command out. So if any one of these is required via the space temperature and um, the time clock enabled, and fabric protection then it will give a signal out to run the pumps if we go into it, one of these folders this is the logic in each one of them folders and of course the DESOPS description of operation there hot water tanks again a PI loop Heating valve, primary pumps, air source heat pump enable, and the logic there. External lighting. So we wanted to select a switch on the graphics of external lighting. So the operator could select time clock and lux. But we had the option of selecting lux only. 
and time clock only. So if the uh, the look you just use the look sensor or the time clock or both. So the that was in the desops. Uh, yeah, there will be a selector switch on the BMS to swap between time schedule or external looks level controls only. Cold water storage tank. Just monitoring. No logic involved in there, but it sends an alarm out for the high or low levels. Domestic cut water. Blank for a reason. That's just the weather, that would be blank for a reason. Safety we've looked at, meters. Blank for a reason, frost protection. Simple frost protection. Now, let's look at the meters though. So I know outstation nine is my meters use wire sheet so these are taking pulses only so it's not modbus to the meters or mbus network so we're just taking a physical pulse which goes into this folder here so there's our pulse coming in and they wanted us to calculate the hourly rate which we've done that from a sliding windows demand, demand 30. So what kilowatts are being used? And this logic will give on the graphic, even for last year, totals, this year totals, this month, last month. Let's show you the graphic again for that one. So these will be giving you all the information that you require for monitoring of how much energy is being used per system and the period. Same with the electric meter and the water meter. Now, I, I was just wondering whether I should put a pop-up on there so that um, they can see history. So I'll just do this one just to show you how I would do that. Click in there, add a kit pop-up binding. And this is air source heat pump one meter total. So let's click on there. Let's go to history. Lots of histories. Pump one, there we go. Meter total. Mm, meter total. So now, what would happen if I click on that? It brings a pop up. There's no data yet, so, but eventually there would be a data and this would bring a graph up of what's happening that and you can select year to date or month to date and it will give you a graph naturally it's going to be on an incline due to the um, being the meter total that gives you an idea of how to do a pop-up. I'll do the pop-ups of the others later. 
and I think that's about it. Um, I don't think there's anything else. We've got users. Oh, the weather. I don't know if I showed you the graphic for weather. I think I did. Yeah, I did. Weather forecast. Now that's using an app in here. Dublin. Use AX property sheet. Open weather map. And then there's the API key there. That's completed. So everything, all the graphics are done. It's ready for loading onto the station. These are all the backnet points, all the outstations. Universal inputs. And then if we look at uh, all the histories. To minimize that. History service. And we have 645 histories, which is what the client wanted. History on everything. And that one is disabled. Let's just enable that one. Okay, I will erase. A couple of more. it for that I mean alarm service critical alarms default and ignore again that's simple enough and then the user service is where we put the users in and the password for them to get in there email service so we've got an outgoing account there so any alarms can be sent out straight away platform service time date that's it until the next job